winning the war against your marriage is our topic today. Life is a battlefield and so is marriage. The Bible says, fight the good fight of faith, 1 Timothy 6.12. The family is a central building block for the church, society, and human civilization. However, we witness today one of the greatest attacks against marriages and families. Unrest, separation, divorce, immorality, unholy practices in marriages are rampant and some people have actually lost the true value of marriage. Research shows that within the last decades, the institution of marriage has changed more than in thousands of years before. For instance, there has been a general upward trend in divorce rates, we are told. We are also told that the number of children born outside wedlock is on the increase. Single parenting is becoming more common. And sadly, women head the majority of single parent households, primarily due to relationship breakdown. Cohabitation is also becoming more prevalent. Although some people attribute the crisis in homes to incompatibility, lack of commitment, but the truth is the devil is the one actually behind the walls in many families. Satan's core mission to kill, steal, and destroy, according to John 10.10, 10, is largely targeted at the home. And it's very important to understand this. The devil's aim is to take you, your marriage, and family down. But in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, I decree concerning your case, the devil shall never succeed. Please understand, you have an enemy, and your enemy is not your spouse. Hear me and hear me very well. Your enemy is not your spouse, it's the devil. The first step on the way to victory is to recognize your enemy. Marriage is beautiful, therefore, the devil hangs around it so he can corrupt it. In Genesis chapter 3, we find out that from the beginning, that was the case with Adam and Eve. Satan has been against the unity, the peace, love, and comfort, as well as the splendor that marriage represents. The deception at the Garden of Eden wasn't just to disconnect man from God through disobedience, but to also bring division in the home. This was why shame, secrecy, blame, and accusation came after the eye opening of Adam and Eve. But as for you, your case shall be different. Therefore, understand clearly, beloved, you are at war with the devil who is against the success of your marriage. You have to stay awake. But the good news is, this war is winnable, no matter what kind of challenge you might be confronted with in your marriage and your family right now. I have good news for you. You will overcome. To win the war against your marriage, you must understand the warfare dimension to your marital challenges. The warfare dimension against your marriage is basically threefold. One, it is spiritual. Second, it's physical. And thirdly, it's mental. First, it's spiritual. Romans 8, 6b says, to be spiritually minded is life and peace. Every successful home is a threat to Satan's kingdom. So he will do anything to destroy it. You have to put up a fight against the devil, your enemy who is working behind the scene against the success of your marriage. To save your marriage, you must be smarter than the devil. You have to be a warrior. Remember, everything in the physical is controlled in the spiritual realm. Number two, this warfare dimension is also physical. Most challenges in marriages even though primarily are spiritual, 
They exist because couples and family members give room to the devil. Ephesians 4.27 tells us clearly, neither give place to the devil. Therefore, pointing accusing finger at the devil alone will not bring solution to the challenges in your marriage. For instance, as a husband, you beat your wife physically and say, oh, it's the devil. As a father, it's time to pay your children's school fees and that's the time you are praying in tongues and say, oh, it's the devil. As a wife and a mother, you keep nagging your husband and insulting him and say, oh, it's the devil. It's far beyond that. Certainly, you have a major role to play. How is your character towards your spouse and family members? Is there pride, jealousy, unforgiveness, bitterness in your marriage? Do your words and actions towards your spouse and family members build or destroy? Is there lack of appreciation, complaints, and unhealthy competition? Check yourself and give no place to the enemy. Three, it's mental. The mind is the battlefield of life. All wars are either won or lost in the mind. Millions of thoughts go through the mind daily, and some can be channeled towards your marriage. Some of the negative actions and attitude people have towards their marriage was first conceived in the mind. What your mind conceives about your marriage or spouse most often materializes. To win the war against your marriage, let me give you some tips that will be of help. Number one, reinforce your foundation. Psalms chapter 11 verse 3, if the foundations be destroyed, what can the righteous do? The foundation of a building determines to a very large extent its strength and its future. To win the war against your marriage, therefore, you must certainly reinforce and constantly reinforce your foundation upon the rock, Jesus Christ. Make Jesus Christ the focus of your marriage. For instance, are you born again? Are you filled with the Holy Ghost with the evidence of speaking in tongues? Do you attend fellowship and church services regularly? Do you have a home church where you serve God and the interests of his kingdom? Do you tell others about the love of God and Jesus Christ as the savior of the whole world? These are all vital areas of your life that you should build on. Rule your marriage and your home by the word of God. John 1, 1b tells us the word was God. So do whatever God's word says for you to do. For instance, the Bible makes it very clear, husbands love your wife. As father and husband, do you love your wife? Wives, the Bible tells us, submit to your own husband in everything. Do you actually do that? So you must learn to engage God's word for the change that you desire in your marriage. Hebrews 1.3 tells us, upholding all things by the word of his power. The word of God is more than enough to uphold your marriage and bring you your desired miracle. There is a testimony of a wonderful lady called Folutile B. She titled her testimony, Missing Husband Returns After Two Years. According to her, she had a strange incursion in her home, which culminated in her husband leaving home for an unknown destination. After much prayers, he returns home only to take off again. What a sad story. In 2002, according to her testimony, her husband left the house again and didn't return for good two solid years. This woman of God decided to read the Bible in search of a solution and began from Genesis till she got to Isaiah 57, 18, which says, I have seen his ways and healed him. I will lead him also and restore comfort unto him and his mourners. So she held on to these words and was at peace. She pleaded the blood of Jesus on her wedding pictures every night and committed God to perform his word. God supernaturally healed her husband and restored her home. Therefore, it doesn't matter how terrible your own situation might be right now, 
I decree in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ divine intervention for you as you hold on to the word of God. Every concern over your marriage shall also be turned around to testimony. John 2, 2 to 9, we are told when they needed wine, they were told what to do. They obeyed and got their desired miracle. Therefore, whatever the word of God tells you to do, do it and your miracle will surface in Jesus' name. Declare God's word over your marriage and your spouse. Command the devil to flee from your marriage. Resist the devil steadfastly in faith to win the war over your marriage. Mix the word of God with faith. And as you do so, your own testimony will appear. Number two, fight for your marriage, not your spouse. You are not to fight your spouse. Rather, you and your spouse are meant to fight the devil. You don't fight spiritual battles in the energy of the flesh. Take responsibility over the success of your home by playing your role. You are a team, you and your spouse, therefore work together and not against each other. Invest in making your marriage what and how you desire it to be. The more you invest in your marriage, the more valuable it becomes. What are the ways to fight for your marriage? A few hints to help you. Number one, pray. The primary way to overcome Satan, I've come to discover, is on your knees. Pray for your marriage, your spouse, and members of your family. Pray with and for one another. Remember, prayer does not only change things, prayer changes individuals. Pray for people also with similar challenges, whether you know them or you don't know them. Ask for divine intervention for them. Job 42.10, we are told, God turned the captivity of Job when he prayed for his friends. Personally, I make time to pray for my family, my family members, both nucleus and extended. It's wonderful and I can tell you it works. I'm a living witness. You can also use your marriage certificate as a point of contact you having challenges in your marriage, take your marriage certificate and use it in prayer as a point of contact. You can also use the picture of your spouse or your children depending on the situation. For instance, if you have problematic children, take their pictures and pray using those pictures as a point of contact. It works like fire. Pay attention also to details. Focus on yourself and what you need to change before you start pointing out accusing finger at your spouse. When you give your married time, resources, attention, affection, definitely it will grow and blossom. When needed, learn to apologize. Genuinely care for your spouse. Over and again, when needed, I have taking time to apologize to my spouse, to my children at different points in time. It's not a sign of weakness, rather it's a sign of strength. Learn to also resolve conflicts very quickly. By so doing, you are pushing the devil away from your home. Renew your marriage vows. You can take time to renew your marriage vows periodically, maybe once a year, twice a year, depending on whatever you want to do. You can do it alone in case your spouse is not ready to join you to do so. By this, you are reaffirming your commitment to making your marriage work. What more? Godly counsel is very vital. Proverbs 24, 6 tells us, For by wise counsel thou shalt make thy war, and in multitude of counselors there is safety. It's wisdom for you when you are challenged and fighting war in your marriage to get in touch with or go for counseling when required. It is often said that a problem shared is half solved. Seek counseling from godly and more mature Christians who have evidence of a successful marriage. I can never forget the testimony of a man 
that came to me for counseling years ago. Himself and his wife had gone their separate ways and his children were now living with him. After he listened to God's word and teaching on marriage, he came to me for counseling and said to me, my case is like the case of Mary and Martha. Who said to Jesus, if you had been here, our brother would not have died. Thanks to God, after counseling, God restored him gloriously. Today, all his children are married and they are having a great home. Hosea 4, 6 tells us also my people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. So make time to read relevant books, attend seminars that will be of help to you. How about gratitude? Gratitude, we are told, determines altitude. Being grateful is two-dimensional. Be grateful to God and be grateful to your spouse and family members. Be grateful to God that you are even married, irrespective of the present challenges in your marriage. You are not grateful for the challenges, but to God who is above every challenge. Be grateful to your family members. Thank you, though made of just two words, can bring a lot of joy and peace to your home. Murmuring and complaint complicates issues, but gratitude creates an avenue for God to intervene in your issues. And I've come to discover the more grateful you are, the more reasons you have to be grateful even the more. Finally, number three, be and remain on guard. Beloved, good marriages are vulnerable to Satan because they are valuable to God. So guard your heart, guard your words, and guard your actions towards your spouse and family members. And one way to guard your marriage is to be consciously committed to obeying God's word regarding it. Examine yourself daily and watch out for those things and character that tamper with the peace of your marriage. There is always room for continuous improvement. No matter how good your marriage is right now, it can be better. Seek to improve. And no matter how bad it may be right now, there is room for a great tomorrow for you. And then, very importantly, don't hide important information from your spouse. Be straightforward and avoid playing hide and seek game because nothing stays hidden forever. In conclusion, listen carefully. Don't ever give up on your marriage. Your victory is closer than ever. It was Thomas Edison that said, and I quote, Our greatest weakness lies in giving up. Therefore, no matter your situation right now, don't you ever give up. I want to share with you this testimony titled Perfection at Last. And this is from a woman called Mrs. Adeniram. This woman lost her marriage, according to her, in 1996 due to foolishness and ignorance. After listening to teachings on marriage, she made up her mind to fight for her marriage and take her home back. And supernaturally, God worked on her through the teachings she has heard, and she straightened her path. Today, she is reconciled with her husband. Peace and respect have been restored. I don't know who you are right now, and I don't know your peculiar situation. You can also fight for your marriage by taking those steps we have talked about today. Believing God for supernatural intervention. Don't throw in the tower because you shall laugh at last. Therefore, right now, whoever you may be and wherever you may be, I'd like you to hook on to this prayer right now. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, every war against the success of your marriage, I come against it now and I pull it down in Jesus' name and I decree and declare your victory in Jesus' mighty name. You shall be the next to testify. As I close, you must be born again. Bow your heads and pray this prayer with me. Say after me, Oh God, I'm a sinner. 
I come to you today. Jesus, save me. From this day forward, I am your child. In Jesus' name, amen. Congratulations. If you pray that prayer, you are born again. Log on to the website address at the bottom of the screen and fill the salvation form. Make sure you locate a Bible believing church close to you and be regular there worshiping the Almighty God. Send your testimonies through this same medium and connect with the social media handles at the bottom of your screen. I have a special gift for you and you can just go on to my website. It is captioned after salvation, what next? It will be a lot of blessing to you. And always remember, God is too faithful to fail. See you next time. Bye.